Hi, Neil here from Portana. So today I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to use Cardaloo's uh, storage software with Portana uh, using Ranch's K3S. So in front of me here I have a standard Ubuntu host. Uh, if I just do a fdisk minus L grep SD, you see here that I have four hard drives physically installed in this machine. Uh, the first hard drive is my boot disk and that is partitioned for Linux to boot. Then I have three blank drives, uh, SDB, SDD, SDC. Now I'm going to use one of these drives to create just a single replica um, virtual volume and then I'm going to use two of these to create a mirrored pair uh, virtual volume using Cuddaloo. So the first thing we need to do is install Ranches K3. So if we just go to the Ranches website and we go to the simple install script and run that to start the install process. Okay, so that's downloaded and is starting. There we go, that's now running. So now we want to install the Cardaloo software. So if you go to the Cardaloo website, cardaloo.io, click on Get Started, and you see here are their instructions. Now, these instructions, uh, even though it's Quick Start, uh, don't actually work if you follow them line by line, there's, there's actually some missing elements in here, and I'll show you that. So if we grab the first first install line here, and we run the pip3 install, pip3 command not found. Now why? Because I don't have pip3 installed. Now to install that, I need to run app get install python3 pip. Now if I do that, it's unable to find it. And the reason being is because I'm running an Ubuntu minimal installation. So in order for that to work, I first need to add the universe repo for my Ubuntu instance. And I need to add that also for the updates. And this is done. So now I've got the universe repo added. So I can now actually install the required Python files. So here we go. Yes, I'm to install it. That's just installing the Python files that we need right now. Okay, so that's now Python installed. So now we can go back to the website and move on to the next next one here, which is we're trying to run this actual command that wouldn't run in the first place. So now I run this. And that's going to install the required plugins. Now let's run the operator. So here we go. And now we want to add storage. Now their example here uh, doesn't really give you much explanation. So the easiest way is if you go to the storage config options on their website here, and you'll you'll get a bit more explanation about what you're doing here. So there are three three different ways of configuring the Cuddaloo with local storage: replica one, two, three. Think of this as RAID zero, uh, RAID one and RAID 5, it's not quite as simply uh, one copy of the data is held, two copies is held, or three copies is held. Uh, and so we want to configure in our example replica 1 and replica 2. Uh, and so the command again you use to do that is, the, the, is this command here, but we have to replace this node name with the name of my host and this path with the name of my path. So, so in my case, that actually looks like this. So I've got my, my host name is Storecube, my path is dev sdb, that is my first 100 gig free disk, and I'm going to add this to a storage pool called storage pool 1. So if I do that, you see here it's added it. So it's added a type of replica 1, it's on sdb, uh, and it's in storage pool 1. Now I want to do the same thing again, uh, but this time for a replica 2. So again, if I come back to the website here, you see Replica 2, there's some options. Again, they don't really show you the exact, whilst they give you the very exact command line for Replica 1 and Replica 3, they don't give you this for Replica 2. But thankfully, Replica 2 is just the same command line as Replica 3, just minus one of the nodes and with Replica 2. So again, in my environment, that actually looks like this. So kubectl Cuddaloo storage add storage pool 2 in this case, because I've already got storage pool 1 for the first one. This time it's type replica 2, and we want to use SDC and SDD, my two other 
100 gig disks. So if I add that, there we go. So this is creating a replica too. Uh, it is created from these two disks and it is using a tiebreaker. Uh, obviously with a two node cluster or, or two node replica, uh, you can get a split brain. How does it know which node is alive and which node's dead? So it uses this tiebreaker, which is hosted by Cuddaloo. Uh, should one node go away, the other node will say, well, am, am I healthy or, or am I faulty and he's healthy? So it talks to the tiebreaker to find that answer. So now, now we can uh, just run the quick kubectl get pods uh, to see whether it's running and you'll see here these are running so there's my storage pool one and my two instances of storage pool two one for each of the disks and so you see they're running there so now let's deploy portainer again you come to the portainer on kubernetes beta page and we just get the yaml file to deploy portainer and run that and then we will deploy Portana against the load balancer. And we can use the load balancer here because it's using K3 with its built-in load balancer. So we can deploy Portana like that. And if we want to just check Portana, we can see, there we go, Portana is creating. So we just have to wait for that to complete. Uh, but in the meantime, we can come up into a browser, 102.168.1.269000. Here we go. Now this is a Kubernetes environment. Now we're prompted to configure the Kubernetes instance. Now in our case with Cataloo, we have only enabled Replica 1 and Replica 2. Yeah, we have not enabled Replica 3, uh, so we're not going to turn that on. Now Cataloo actually supports uh, both read-write from, from a single and also read-write from, from one or more pods simultaneously. So we can actually tick both of these for these two options. And we know that back from the Cataloo site here. Um, where it says that it supports RWX and RWO. So we, we can enable those in here. Now again, we can turn on the load balancer if we want uh, and click Save. So we have now got Portano running and configured to use Cataloo. And I'll just show you how to deploy a volume. So if I say MySQL, MySQL 5.6, environment variable my, oops, MySQL, root password persisted folder var lib mysql it's a 15 gig disk on replica one so that means just one instance it's only going to hold one copy of this uh, publish port 3306 and deploy uh, this will go work in the background, but in the meantime, we can go to volumes. We can see the volumes being created in Replica 1, 15 gig size. If we go into this one here, click on events, you can see here, when enter it to be created, external provisioner is provisioning volume, successfully provisioned volume. So there we go. So we have talked to the underlying storage. It's created the volume for me. Come back into my application. We just need to wait for this to download. It's still, still pulling. It's going to take a little while to download and, and get set up. Uh, but in the meantime, what we'll do is go back to our Linux environment here. And if I just do make the slash mnt slash sdb, and then do a mount dev sdb to mount, oops, sdb. There you go, cd mnt sdb ls there's my brick this is the actual underlying storage uh, that is being created so if i go to brick ls oops ls subvol ls cd bar ls cd17 ls you wouldn't normally do this cd pvc ls there is the mysql data that is contained in that volume so yeah, this is a way of just seeing this now you wouldn't normally do this is just to show you that it is actually creating the volumes uh, inside from this SDB disk. So if I come back into Portana now, refresh, should see that MySQL is running. Yes, it is. It's running and we're this valid and we know that anyway, so we just looked at, at, the, at the disk. Now, if I come and do the same thing again, MySQL2, MySQL 5.6, MySQL root password. Now we do 
lib my SQL in 15 gig. This time we're going to use Replica 2. So this time it's going to hold two copies of the data, one on each of those disks. 3306 again. Deploy it. Uh, same thing. Now we're going to see here's Replica 2, 15 gig. Go into here, events. It's provisioning it and successfully provisioned. So this has again gone and talked to the underlying storage platform and has gone and created now two copies of the volume, uh, one on each of the disks. Um, that is relatively easy to see again. We could we could remap again and we will do that. So if I just get out of all this directory here and just go cd slash make do mnt s d c mount dev sdc mnt sdc mnt there's the brick and there's 35 that's just for that volume and if i did the exact same thing on the other node on the other disk i should say make do MNT SDD MNT SDD MNT SDD LS brick CD sub sub vol 35. So there you go, we've got the volume replicated across both of those disks. So now if, if one of these disks was to fail, no problem, the data would still be able to be accessed from the other one. Uh, obviously with, with re, uh, Replica 1, if that single disk failed, you'd lose all your data. So that, that is basically Cardaloo running with both Replica 1 and Replica 2. Uh, if you so desired, you could do the same thing with Replica 3. Uh, if you had three disks, um, and again, it would just hold three copies of your data, uh, and that will, that will basically give you extra high levels of resilience. Now, this is just a single node cluster. Uh, if you had multi-node clusters, um, it would look a little bit different. Uh, obviously, the command to create it would be somewhat different. You wouldn't necessarily have it looking just like this. You would actually have, rather than store cube, you'd have store cube node two, uh, store cube node one, as an example and it would then go and create these for you across those multiple nodes. But for this for this example, it was just a single node. Uh, this is exactly how this works. So that is how you configure Cardaloo storage with Portainer. Um, again, you see this is running here on this, this two node replica. So very, very simple and very nice way to get yourself um, reliable cluster aware uh, storage uh, using local disks in your machine.